What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Mike Force Podcast. It is, of course, your host, Mike G, on the uh, YouTubes right now. And if you're listening to this, you can go to YouTube right now on the Mike Force Podcast and subscribe. Hit that notification tab. Um, I want to say thank you to all the um, people who are subscribing, leaving great feedback, and on YouTube, as well as subscribing to the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, and wherever you might find it. It's really cool to see the growth of this podcast over the last couple of years. Um, have a real commitment to giving you um, the best value and asking for absolutely nothing. I mean, I got a company, the Phil Craft Survival Podcast, uh, the Phil Craft Survival Channel, all the, those great things. But I'm not asking for anything on this. I, I want to share kind of lessons learned, preparedness, rally racing, all the stuff that's going on in my life. And I hope to be an inspiration to you. And if you find value in that, leave feedback below and let us know. Um, guys, just got back from New York City. It was an amazing experience for me to be involved in the public offering, the IPO of Black Rifle Coffee Company. Um, man, standing on the stage, the platform at the New York Stock Exchange and watching Evan and his family and the wonderful team at Black Rifle Coffee ringing the bell is super powerful. Um, let me let me just say say this. Eight years, Evan took a company where he was selling coffee out of his garage to now a public offering where I thought, um, I might have saw this morning, that it was 38% the stock was up. And they did about $150 million in cash, according to this article, that they could influx into Black Rifle Coffee to grow more coffee shops, hire more veterans and people, and just do great things across the country. When I was there that morning in New York City, right across um, from Tower 1 and Tower 2 of the World Trade Center, as well as down the road from the New York Stock Exchange, it was, it, we walked there. It was really cool that we got to donate 71, I said we, Black Rifle Coffee donated $71,000 to the Hunter 7 Foundation. Big shout out to Hunter 7, who's looking at veterans and all these cancers, just like Vietnam with the Agent, Agent Orange, but all these things that are affecting all these military guys and gals who have been exposed to chemicals, um, all the hazards outside of the enemy. The enemy was the short form hazard. Uh, when you look at the long road ahead for veterans, it's like, man, all those things being exposed to the chemicals, the the uh, trash dumps. I mean, the list goes on. I, I, I have myself five rotations to Iraq where I was exposed to a lot of stuff. And Hunter 7 um, is doing a lot of research, development, as well as treatment plans on assessing veterans, but coming up with solutions to be able to treat them. Uh, met a wonderful nurse uh, and, and guy who, who started Hunter 7. It was just really cool to see, guys. Really cool to see. And then Evan goes in and rings the bell and then donates another couple hundred thousand dollars to other foundations. And it's just an amazing tribute. It's like, you know, I, I've never seen a company give back so much. And there's no, there's no incentive for me here to blow smoke up your ass because I'm not interested in that. But when I see the attacks on social media and all the drama, which is very small in comparison to the, the good uh, that I see and the good that um, uh, we see in giving back, I, I get disappointed because it disappoints me that young men would come out of the woodwork and just say stupid stuff like the corporate, you know, corporate sellouts and the sh and the shills, whatever, whatever the shit they're saying is. It blows my mind because I see all these guys who are like, you're a corporate sellout way to sell out to big, big corp. And I'm like, you're texting on a Apple iPhone that was made in China that costs you like 1500 bucks. Shut your mouth. Um, look, I, I'm not in the business anymore of getting, um, being toxic and dramatic. I don't, I don't think I've ever been that way. Uh, I've, I've certainly gone down roads. I don't, I don't find any, there's no interest in it for me. Um, I have a business to run. And when you have a business to run, you're employing people, you're, you're uh, trying to do good stuff in the world, you're leading, you're moving forward. Like I said before in my last podcast, I don't have time to look left and right or behind me. Uh, a lot of guys think I'm super interested in them. I'm, I'm not. Uh, like, like you take 
uh, no time in my day because um, I, I have a lot to accomplish. I mean, I run several businesses, uh, the Wolf 21, which helps people get better sleep because it certainly helped me with CBD and CBN, um, Phil Craft Survival, and I started a new line under Ben Walker uh, Trading Company. So um, I, I just ain't got time for that. Um, what I will say about the corporate thing Look, we live in the greatest country on the planet Earth. You, the United States is a place where you have more choice and more opportunity uh, than any other place on the planet. And when I see people talk about that selling out to corporate entities, it, that, that really bothers me. Look, a lot, of our, a lot of our country is wrapped around this idea, basically tied in socialism. You can call it communism. Uh, you can call it Marxist ideology that the government is the solution. Having worked for the government for 20 years of my life, the government is never the solution. Um, governance is the wrong tactic. Offering constitution, uh, constitutional rights, offering law and order, uh, giving liberty and freedoms to citizens and allowing them to thrive via their own incentives in growing, evolving, changing generational poverty. I mean, I grew up poor, but I'm not just working for myself. I'm working for my future, for generations to come, because I don't want ever for future generations to ever have to struggle like I did growing up. Uh, I appreciate that journey. There's no complaints for me, but certainly there's a lot of people in this country who think the dependency on the government is the solution. So they vote that way because they want that government uh, handout, not me. I want to thrive opportunistically uh, as a capitalist. Being on the New York Stock Exchange, which has a lot of history, and seeing Black Rifle go public has motivated me as an entrepreneur. I mean, I know Evan's work ethic, and I know Black Rifle Coffee's work ethic, but to see that level of passion poured into something and then now continue to grow and thrive via free market, where now you can go on and buy brc stock on the new york stock exchange and be part of this magic um, i'll be out at black rifle coffees across the nation this year doing grand openings and speaking engagements to bring people together that's the objective here guys um for all those uh naysayers and trolls i'll just block and delete you i don't even care i don't even waste time with you losers um most of you don't got your shit together because if you got time and energy to talk shit about people to get out there and uh, troll people, you're likely not doing well yourself. And I feel bad for you. I'm here to help you, give you advice. I got plenty of podcasts on that. Uh, even help you stand up a business because I, I want to see you succeed. But if you want to continue to be toxic, I'll delete and block you and move on with my life. But I hope you figure out a path for your own because I see a lot of guys who don't got their shit together. Their family's in a disarray. Their kids hate them. They don't spend time with their families. Um, they do all this whack stuff. And then they expect, because they want the attention, I think, on social media uh, for people to placate to their drama. I, I, ain't nobody got time for that. Um, one impactful experience at the World Trade Center was standing over Tower 2, uh, which is an amazing tribute. I, I, I thought... That we that because we didn't rebuild because I wanted us to rebuild and and do ten floors taller than before, um, I, I didn't know how it was because I've never been back since nine eleven or, or since ever I've never been in New York City but since I saw the events unfold in nine eleven, it changed the trajectory of my life. That's pretty impactful. So I wanted to pay my respects and lost a lot of friends, a lot of brothers in arms, but I stood there. And there wasn't a lot of people there. There was people mingling, but nobody was really uh, paying attention and taking the time. And I was just staring there. And I looked over, and there's an uh, a a older African-American lady who's standing there, I assumed. And she had a mask on. And I said, where were you when this all went down? And she pointed across the way and said, I was right there. And, um, man, it just chokes me up just thinking about it. And... On the events of 9-11, she was going through a visa process because she had to go overseas to Grenada, where she was from. And that happened, and she went immediately to child care, got her children in, and went home. And she started tearing up just telling me this story. 
and it really impacted her life. You know, thousands of Americans uh, died in the World Trade Center in the Pentagon in a field in the, in the middle of our rural country. And she was saddened by that. And she also said that she wished that we were more united because we're div being divided by media and by uh, all these toxic human beings over nothing, over race, over politics. And we need to get back to being together and being united. Um, thank you for that conversation. She doesn't know me. She doesn't know who I am. She doesn't listen to this podcast. But it, it, it drove a fire under my ass to go, man, what are we doing? And what do I need to spend my attention in doing in social media space? Um, I need to spend my attention on being positive, giving a value add, motivating you to get off your ass and do something exceptional. And that's what I'll continue to do. That's the goal. That's the objective here. Um, the cool thing about doing the YouTubes is I could talk to you guys and show you stuff. Like I got a P365 XL comp in front of me, which we'll talk about. Um, saw an Instagram post by a guy I respect who's in the industry who writes for a, a tactical publication talking about the case of comping versus non-comping. And he talked about holding it retracted or re in retention close to your body in a close proximity confrontation. I mean, if you're in that circumstance, you're, you're definitely in a worst case scenario. But he talked about not eating the muzzle break. And I respect that argument, but what I'll tell you is when I tested the comp versus non comp, that was the least of my worries. It, it, it's going to be the least of your worries. Compensation um, into your face in the middle of a close contact engagement, which I've been in in real life. Um, one of the first guys that I engaged in Iraq, my bear was literally touching his hand in his chest because he was hiding behind a door. And that transpired. No, no um, thought of mine was, ooh, this muzzle break's going to hurt, right? <laughs> I was in an, the middle of an engagement. Um, also, what I'll say is in the 365XL comp version, it's not compensating through porting the barrel. It's actually, you can see it here on the YouTubes, it's actually compensating it in the slide, which means that the brass is not going to cut through the lands and grooves and you're not going to eat brass through the barrel. Um, you'll eat gas, air, um, but it's not going to be dramatic. I've already tested it, and it's not a big deal. What I will say is the biggest benefit in this pistol that I've seen outside of the beautiful stipple job that's on here. Oh, by the way, this is not a hand stipple job. This is laser engraved. Uh, I think I said it was by hand last time. It's laser engraved via machine, but it's stippled. The, the polymer, the plastic on it is stippled. Um, besides the titanium nitrate or nitride um, and, the, and the broken compensation, everything and form factor is the same as the 365XL. Back to the case in point, reducing muzzle flip by as a, a proposed 30% is a big deal. Especially when you look at how compact this pistol is. I mean, my hands are relatively large. You can see right here in the picture or the video how big my hand is over this. But for a compact or subcompact pistol, reducing this, because this is certainly a snappy gun because of how big it is in its form factor, it kicks. The muzzle flip uh, is aggressive. Reducing that by 30% is something I'm all about. Look, I'm, I'm again, not looking for tactical disadvantage here. I'm looking for tactical advantages. So if I have to pay for that advantage, I'm down for that. Now, certainly the 365XL in its basic form factor is a great pistol. But what I'm going to do is hopefully convince Sig to do a pistol with me that's called the tactical advantage. I don't know if we could do this. Uh, I might just do a custom gun myself. But doing the compensation on the front end, doing a red dot, even though I don't use a red dot, the red dot is definitely a tactical advantage. It's proven. And doing an infrared and light integration into the rail system of this pistol. 
I'd like to see an increase in magazine capacity. I think 12 rounds is good, but 15 rounds is better, but I'm no engineer. And then making this the perfect EDC balance. I think out of all the pistols I've used, the Glock 19 is a little fat for me. I don't like the shallowness of the frame. This is the best EDC pistol I've ever used. Um, and Sig doesn't pay me to say that. I, I am saying that because I've used a lot of EDC pistols. And it's a perfect balance for my hand. Now, if you're a guy who has a small, small hand, maybe not so much. If you're a guy who has a massive hand bigger than mine, which is rare, but if you're, you know, um, Dikembe Mutombo, um, a massive handed person, you got a hand bigger than that, then yeah, it might be a little bit too small and you go full size, 320X carry, there you go. Or Glock 17, there you go. Um, anyways, wanted to bring that up as well. I'll, I'll be up at Rally Ready in Austin, Texas on the 19th of this month in February doing a training event. It's actually an event event, but I'll also be doing a, a little bit of training for Rally for the American Rally Association, ARA. I encourage you to come out and see me. I'll be out there in uh, the middle of March doing an American Rally Association race. I'll be in a car. I won't be out milling around, but I'll be in a car racing through the woods, 100 acre in the, in the, in the woods. And um, the beginning of March, I'll be out with Travis Pastrana shooting a TV show. JT, who's the mastermind behind this, um, has developed a, a show on me and my transition from being an entrepreneur, which I always will be, but going from the corporate seat to the rally seat. And hopefully Travis Strong is healed up by then, but we'll be racing in a rally car, be training, and he'll show my transition. Look, the, uh, and this is no offense to Travis Pastrana, no offense to Ken Block, no offense to Dave Higgins, some of the best dudes, Brandon Semenek, some of the best dudes on the planet who race. I think I could beat them all. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say, um, I don't think I can beat them all. I think I could beat them all. I have the discipline. Look, I, I have right here in this space, you don't see it yet. I'll show you guys on the next podcast when I set it up. I have in this space right here, the area to be built, um, my iRacing sim. It's basically a big video game that you could practice rally. I guarantee you, I will put in more work and time. Do I have a lot of catching up to do? Yeah, most certainly. Um, I have a lot of catching up to do, but I'm in this for the long haul, the long run. You know, me, my focus this year is growing Fieldcraft Survival uh, by 50%. Um, it's working with great partners like Black Rifle Coffee, like Eastman's Hunting Journal, like uh, Eberl Stock, like Kafaru, all these amazing companies, Eagles and Angels. Man, I'm going to miss one. I'm sorry. Um, but all these amazing companies as well as uh, focusing on motorsports. I'm racing Pikes Peak. I just ordered a Corvette that I hope to race in Pikes Peak. I, I want an American racing car to race in Pikes Peak because it's American iconic race. Um, maybe I'll put a Korean flag on there or something, but I'm, I'm excited about that path and that journey. Um, I wanted to spend the rest of this time, it's going to be a short form podcast, but I want to spend the rest of this time in the podcast to talk about um, the questions you've asked me I've gotten several questions related to leadership, related to tactics that I have set aside to answer for you on this podcast. So here we go. All right. So let me get my notes right here. All right. So one of the first questions is, uh, Mike, uh, with all the volatility going on in the world and all of the divisiveness, how does this unfold? Well, when you look at um, everything happening, most certainly we are in a very bad political situation with the lowest approval rating of any president, um, I think in history. Um, to give you a little bit of context, um, and I'm parastoring here because I don't, I, I, I vaguely remember the exact specifics, but let me tell you a roundabout. Um, Joe Biden's approval ratings are at 38%. Um, Trump's approval ratings at their lowest were about 42%. Obama, uh, 48%. Um, George W. Bush, 81, 82%. So if you look at the last few presidents and the circumstance we're in now, we're really divided because we have a big gap between 
the headshed, the leadership of this country, and then the people of this country. Um, I felt it, man. I was at, you know, in New York City, the mass mandate um, ban, uh, the mass mandate lifted. And even though we had to wear ma- masks in certain places in New York City, out and about, nobody was wearing a mask. COVID is certainly uh, going to be a thing of the past in the near future. Omicron, which is shown to be highly contagious, but also the variant, the new variant of COVID is exposing everybody to COVID. So the rates across the board have significantly dropped. So what does that mean? Well, a lot of companies, including Big Pharma, want control still. I mean, the FDA today just released a news memo or a press release that they're going to stop and kind of pause on the vaccine's approval for children under five years uh, or younger. Like, they're not even in a category that's high risk. Um, there's no data to support that. And, and again, I'm not, a, I'm not a, uh, a scientist nor a doctor or have no expertise on this, but I'm reading the data from the release from the FDA released from the CDC, and there's no data to um, uh, state that we need to come up with that solution. There's a lot of data showing that mask with kids in schools is not going very well. Their mental health has completely uh, uh, been affected in a negative way. I mean, I just saw news uh, from uh, the BBC where in Israel they were releasing the mask mandates and kids were just told to take off their mask and they don't have to wear a mask anymore and they celebrate it and they should as they should. This country needs to get back to work. I just watched a series on HBO on Mark Wahlberg and his, and his businesses. I think it was something like the Wall Street or something. The I don't know. I messed that up completely, but pretty good mini series documentary on Mark Wahlberg and his entrepreneurship spirit and all the businesses he's running and all the things that are going on in COVID. In the middle of this documentary, uh, it wasn't planned. Um, COVID happened and it's destroying his businesses. And that sucks. Look, COVID sucks. It's killed a lot of people. It's been a, a, a nightmare for the society, for the world. But why aren't we figuring out the origin story of COVID? Was it used as a weapon? for uh, hurting our country? Because if it was, it's an effective weapon of war and killed over 800,000 people in this country. So when you look at the powers to be, and pol- whether that's political, um, politically driven, um, mostly greed and, and wealth, I mean, Nancy Pelosi has made hundreds of millions of dollars being a politician her entire life. That's insanity. We need to get back to basics, people. And what I'm afraid is going to happen is people are just going to put their foot down. They're just going to stop. Now, that's probably going to be the, um, a significant event kickstarting that. But we're primed for it. People are pissed off. People are angry. People are out of work. People have lost their jobs. And I could see that frustration. I could see it in friends and family and associates. And it sucks. So what we need to do as communities... One, if you live in a place that's radical because of the governance that's been drowning its people, um, they don't follow the rules, the regulations, um, and they'll just continue to suppress and oppress their people, leave. Uh, you, you, to fight that battle, just leave. Homelessness, crime, all the bad things are up exponentially. Leave and come join a community that wants you. Heber City, Park City, Salt Lake City wants you. Because Utah is a great place to raise a family, a great place uh, as a community. Um, come out here. We want you. If you live in L.A., you live in San Francisco, you live in these places that are just falling apart, leave. That's the best advice I can give you. What I think we need to do is get back to basics. Get off our damn cell phones um, outside of positive interactions. Maybe listen to podcasts, um, get in education, and focus on being positive. Um, that's what I would recommend. Let me ask another or answer another question. Mike, what is your favorite jacket 
out of all the jackets you own because I see you often have different types of jackets. It's true. Um, I'm wearing right now a cool shirt, KUHL, private business in uh, uh, Salt Lake City that's born in the mountains. I felt like I was born in the mountains as a contractor. I, I think I was, as a contractor off active duty for the Central Intelligence Agency, I was one of the first guys that was wearing cool out of REI. Um, I was certainly a guy in popular culture that was wearing Solomons because I wore them on active duty. Uh, I even remember on active duty having a lot of my buddies go, what kind of shoes are those? And they'd go out and buy them. Or what kind of shirt is that? And it's a cool shirt. Look, I'm all about the utility of, of uh, clothing, uh, of apparel. If it doesn't work, um, then I don't wear it. And I'll never wear it. But if it works, because it's tied to a company that cares about that kind of thing, then I'm on board of that company. Cool is one of those companies. I'd say my favorite jackets are my cool jacket. Uh, I got an Eberl stock jacket. That's amazing. Eberl stock starting to make clothing. And I'll tell you this because uh, I'm closely uh, partnered with uh, Eberl stock. They, I mean, they don't pay me or nothing, but I, I like their uh, CEO, Glenn and owner. I like their marketing guys. But one of the jackets that I own from them is one of the warmest jackets I've ever owned. So that's one of my favorite ones. And Patagonia. I mean, I have a Patagonia issued jacket that I got on active duty probably about 10 years ago. And it's a loft jacket. It's super warm, super cozy, but the quality and utility is amazing. So basically affiliated with my favorite brands, you got Cool at number one. Uh, I would say Eberl Stock and Sitka. I like Sitka stuff, but they don't. I don't have a lot of solid colors of Sitka. I use it for hunting. And then likely, um, I'll just say Patagonia. I like Patagonia. Look, Patagonia, some of this stuff is too small for me because I'm a big dude. And so like an extra large isn't going to fit me right. So I got to get a double XL. Same thing with Cool. This is an extra large, but it's kind of small. Um, so yeah, those are my three jack favorite jackets. All right. Um, Mike, I noticed that you don't have the AT Overland set up. Why, what setup did you go to and what's your favorite overlanding setup? Um, that's a good question. That really depends on the circumstance because that really depends on where I'm going and what I'm doing. Look, I don't do a lot of camping nowadays. One of the reasons I don't, uh, I, like I remember doing a post and saying, like, I, you know, I, I just don't camp that way and people were calling me pussy and everything. You can call me whatever you want. Um, I've spent a lot of time on the ground in the dirt camping unintentionally uh, in combat and training. And I got a lot of time in the wood line. I'm not trying to be uncomfortable if I don't have to be. There's a time and place. Um, if I'm hiking a 14,000 foot um, summit, if I'm out in the back country doing survival stuff, yeah, time and place. But I'm not looking to be uncomfortable. So one of the setups I've been looking at is the Alu Cab setup for my Land Cruiser, my 94 Land Cruiser, which is a right-hand drive turbo diesel uh, pickup truck. I love that truck. Never sell that truck. It's one of my favorites. Um, but that setup for me is like my go-to. The AT Overland setup's great, except it's kind of cold. And so you have to insulate it. And then likely for full-time overland travel, you need to put a heater in it, like a diesel heater. Um, so my truck broke down. So we pulled it off and put it on one of my guy's trucks, Danny's trucks, uh, truck. And then I just put a diamondback cover on my pickup truck because I'll do ground camping because I could blow up an air mattress. I could do a tent. I could just do a more robust setup. So... I am more aligned with doing a ground camping in overlanding because um, I can do a large tent. I could pitch a tent, a large tent, and then I could do like a thermorest mattress or something that's a, not a whole mattress, guys, but a little something that's better. Um, like on my pickup truck, I put that diamondback cover. I could actually camp on top of that cover. It's got like a load bearing capacity of like a couple thousand pounds. Like you load stuff on top of it. That's on top of my Dodge diesel pickup truck. Um, also, uh, my buddy Foster got a setup that's a, a four-wheel camper setup on top of a pickup truck. I actually might go that route because I can get a turbo or I can get a, uh, my turbo diesel can tow a lot, can also load uh, capability-wise, carry a lot, but I can be in the heat. 
I could be in an air conditioner. Um, and it's comfortable. It's got the right insulation. So that's my setup for now. I'm trying to get an Alicab pop-top camper that's got a little bit of insulation in on top of my Land Cruiser, my 2006. So I might do that as well. Um, one more question. Mike, what is your favorite EDC setup currently, and what do you carry besides a pistol? Um, good question. Um, I don't think EDC is just your pistol. If, you, if you're just doing that, you're making a mistake. Uh, I got a couple of items in front. Like this is the Philcraft Survival Ankle Med Holster. Um, it's Med 0101. It's all the stuff you need for stop the bleed. I'll carry that on my ankle if I'm wearing barn boots um, and, and um, um, boot jeans. Don't wear skinny jeans with that. You'll be able to see it or at least wear two of them so it looks normal. Um, I carry a 365 XL, this uh, tactical advantage. <laughs> that's, that's the name I wish it was. Um, 365 XL comp. I'm carrying that right now in between that. And like I was just carrying a Glock 17 made by Zev the other day. Cause I had a little bit more robust, uh, set up. Like I had a full winter jacket, like a big April stock jacket. Um, I'll wear that every once in a while, but mostly it's this 365 XL, um, comp. Um, I'm also carrying uh, a tourniquet an inside the waistband tourniquet in a Phil Kraus survival tourniquet holder. I got a surefire flashlight, a Victor one, or I'll carry a uh, Haley strategics, um, uh, standalone, uh, handheld. Um, I also carry a knife. I've been carrying a, uh, a, a fixed blade, but I, I mostly carry a, a Emerson folding knife. Um, I also carry a wallet like everybody else, but I got an RFID wallet, depending on if like I'm, I'm going to airport, like I just went traveling to New York city. Uh, I don't want to be RFID compromised. So, um, I'll have an RFID protective wallet that has the liner in it. It's basically a copper lining. Uh, so I'm not compromised. My identity is not stolen. And I think that's about it. Look guys, I'm all about utility also in what I wear for everyday carry. So from head to toe, I'm wearing the right setup, you know, I, whether it's a wick away shirt or under armor underwear or, you know, um, Solomon boots or crispy boots. I want to be squared away that way. Guys, I want to keep this podcast at around 30 minutes because um, a lot of you guys' attention span is short. And also I want to do more of these short form ones um, because I want to tie them into your commute. Some of my podcasts are long form, depending on who I'm talking to or interviewing. Make sure you guys get signed up for the GBRS event. Now I got GBRS coming into town 26 February, which is a Saturday. Is that 25 February? No, I believe that's 26 February. Uh, you guys can come in. We'll have um, a meet and greet. We'll have a Q&A session, and we'll just shoot the shit. You get appetizers and all kinds of cool stuff. Get to hang out with me, DJ, and Cole from GBRS. You can go to com to sign up for that. Also, we're doing a discount. Um, if you go on thewolf21.com right now, um, you guys can get access to a discount, 30% off, I believe it is, uh, on Tactical Tincture. Make sure you go there. Tactical Tincture is CBG, which is, it's like caffeine. It's like a natural booster. It activates your cannabinoid system. None of this stuff is synthetic, guys. This is all natural. Big Pharma doesn't want me to have a CBD, CBN company. They won't even let me in social media plug and promote it. Why? Because they're scared of it, because it hurts the bottom line of the Big Pharma. You can go to the Wolf 21, get my bed down, which is CBD and CBN. You can get standalone CBD. You can get CBD that you can apply to your, uh, like me, my tennis elbow. Um, all the things that you need, natural elements of it at thewolf21.com. Guys, thank you so much for the, the time, investing your energy and listening to me run my mouth. I appreciate you. Until next time. Peace. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.